Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Command Sergeant Major Cheryl Lyon, the Senior Enlisted Leader at U.S. Cyber Command. Thank you so much for joining us, Cheryl. Oh, thank you, Scott. I appreciate you taking the time to invite me and uh, having this opportunity. So broadly speaking, I wanted to just kind of dive in and ask you about your cybersecurity policies, what you're working with right now, and what your general approach to cybersecurity is. Well, Scott, so Cybercom's involved in cyber, of course, is the cybersecurity every day, uh, as is the general population. Uh, cyber never sleeps. Uh, it is always actively engaged, uh, going back and forth between us and our adversaries. So to that theme, there's a persistent engagement that we are involved in because we know that there will always be someone who's attempting to infiltrate our systems and to test our resolve. Uh, so we enable and we act. We enable our partners. Uh, we work closely with other elements of the government as well as the private sector. Uh, then we act, imposing costs on our adversaries. Uh, those costs can be in the form of time, money, and tools, and hopefully we can uh, cost them as much as possible. And we no longer wait for the enemy to come to us. Uh, we know that they will continue to press the attack, uh, so we must take the fight to them. Uh, to this end, we are engaging in hunt port operations, and through, through that we send our cyber operators, uh, we send them abroad to collect insights into what our adversaries are doing uh, in the gray space. Uh, this is, of course, at the request of our allies and partners. And I know U.S. Cyber Command recently bumped up to a full combatant command, and it's been around for quite a while, but it's kind of a little bit of an ambiguous name, right? So maybe you could help our listeners understand what Cyber Command does and, and how you work with the military as a whole. So Cyber Command is working to um, prevent our adversaries from gaining uh, access to our networks and our data systems, uh, which are the backbone of our uh, forces. So we are not alone in this fight. Um, cyber affects uh, the civilian sector as much as it does the military sector, the Department of Defense. So we have to be able to protect all of our assets and ensure that that we don't allow our adversaries to have a toehold uh, to, or to even breach uh, our networks. Because if they do, they can cause detrimental damage uh, to our abilities to conduct uh, our operations. So, so cyber really permeates into everyone's life. And even if you don't think it does, it's really a part of our everyday uh, life from now on. Uh, could you explain how Cyber Command works with the everyday part of life and some of the missions that you work on? Okay, uh, so Scott, uh, so you're right. Uh, cyber touches everybody every day. Uh, though anyone who has a, a cell phone, a smart device, uh, an internet access uh, has the potential to be become a cyber victim. So to that end, because cyber never sleeps and it's 24 and seven, we have a joint operation system. Um, and this system, because it works 24 and seven, it enables information sharing and a quick response across the command. Uh, we are also uh, integrated with other combatant commands uh, through the cyberspace, what we call the cyberspace operations integrated planning elements. Um, these uh, elements are working with our combatant commands to enable us to respond quickly uh, to any type of cyber threat. Uh, we provide threat and warning uh, tip-offs, and those are not exclusive to uh, the military to the Department of Defense. They could be a part of industry. They could be a part of academia. Uh, everyone, like we said, is affected by cyber, uh, has a role in cyber. So those facilities allow us to have quick response um, and to respond quickly and provide mitigation uh, to any type of uh, in intrusion. And one of the things that we've done recently um, that is worth Noticing or mentioning is the Cyber Nine Line. Uh, we consider it part of the big data platform, and it enables us to share insights to threats and vulner vulnerabilities across the United States uh, with our state National Guard uh, guardsmen. Uh, it, it's a nascent capability; it's brand new, but there are 35 states participating to date, uh, and they will continue, I think, into the future. Remember that the National Guardsmen—they have—they are the first line of defense. Uh, for the homeland. 
And so it's important uh, as they work with uh, the Department of Homeland Security to make sure that we have uh, capabilities uh, established. You have these cyber mission teams that are within the National Guard, and I believe they're also within the services. What kind of function do, do they serve? So their functions are the same as uh, in the, the regular uh, services. They, one of the things I think is important to realize about our National Guard brothers and sisters is that uh, they work cyber mission, many of them, in their daily jobs. And that is in the civilian sector. Uh, they are cybersecurity for industry, government, um, academia, hospitals. You know, as we said, everybody is touched by cyber in some shape, form, or fashion. So, as a as a force, they also support the Department of Homeland uh, uh, Security in being the first line of defense for the United States, especially when it comes to a cyber operation. And so they provide that response, uh, and it's, that's why the nine line is so important is so that we can share that information, do tipping and queuing, and enable uh, a better response and to quickly mitigate any type of um, intrusion. And I'm going to go a little bit into automation here and AI for a second. But before that, I was wondering if you could just talk about the threat landscape a little bit so people understand what you're up against. Okay, Scott, so as we, as we mentioned, everybody, and I put this in layman's terms, I think, is that everybody's affected by cyber uh, who has any type of electronic device. So what we have to know about our adversaries is that they are very capable as well. Uh, they have made significant strides, and they could and can threaten our very existence uh, on a daily basis. So um, the great great power competition uh, is uh, part of our existence uh, as our adversaries continue to improve their capabilities as well. It's that going back and forth, the persistent engagement that is per, uh, per, perpetually uh, involved uh, with mitigating the actions of our adversaries as they mitigate the actions that we take. Uh, so as we all continue to develop in this realm, as you said, technology continues to advance as well, and it must. So we are persistently engaged in this fight, uh, and uh, the great power competition is a part of our daily existence. And what's the role of automation in that? You said that there's a persistent attacking and persistent threats. Uh, so how are you using automation to be part of your cybersecurity as a command and also within your mission as well? So Scott, so as you can imagine, there are terabytes upon terabytes of data that are produced during cyber operations. Uh, it's just the nature of the business. And what to do with that uh, amount of data is critical to the success. How do you quickly formulate it, manipulate it, uh, provide um, analysis from it so that it can be used to mitigate any type of intrusion uh, or to advance our efforts? Um, we have a number of capabilities that we are um, instigating. One that I um, particularly like uh, is the persistent tri cyber training environment. Uh, that's under our joint cyber warfare um, warfighting architecture. And this endeavor, it, it, it enables us to set up a standard that, and to use the persistent cyber training environment from all that data that we gather in, and, and, and have at our um, available, available to us to help prepare our cyber warriors uh, to be able to conduct their operations. Uh, near real time, they can see what the adversary is able to develop, how they would mitigate it, uh, and it allows them to train up and be able to um, to fight in this cyber domain. In other words, we like to, to train as we fight, and that system gives them that capability. Dreamport is another one that I think is a great capability, and it's a really important tool, and the reason why is because it enables us to work with and collaborate with industry and academia who are facing the same issues. You know, we said that cyber is not strictly a uh, Department of Defense problem. It's a, it's a global problem. But Dreamport is a tool that we use to allow us to work with academia and industry to address some of those issues that are not unique just to us, 
but that everyone encounters. And so it's a great tool and it allows innovation and creation and those individuals who work there, are uh, they are empowered to be able to use the skills that they have to develop um, mitigation techniques, platforms. And and along with automation, how much are you giving credence to AI? I know it's a big buzzword right now, but is it something that you're considering? Is it something that's already in play for Cyber Command at this point? So Scott, we were talking about uh, artificial intelligence. And one of the things that we need to remember about artificial intelligence is that people make the AI go. Uh, it's, we use it as a force multiplier and we consider that we'll have amplifying uh, lethality and effectiveness for our forces. Uh, but one of the things that we must consider is how we use it, and we must also ensure that we always follow the rule of law when we use uh, AI. So that's really important uh, to the conversation. And I'm assuming that goes hand in hand with, with automation. Uh, I think they do. Um, I personally, so this is where the two weeks in the job comes in, and I'm sure. like, I'm not sure, or uh, endeavors on AI. Um, but I know that we do have the capability uh, to develop that, and we are working toward that. So it's another of those that's nascent, and while, uh, while can some consider it uh, not to be uh, a real threat, I think we have to give it the credit that it is due. Right. Well, we're going to take another quick break here, and then we'll jump back in and talk a little bit more about all things cybersecurity, as well as talk about what Cyber Command has been doing in this space. So my guest today is Command Sergeant Major Cheryl D. Lyon, the Senior Enlisted Leader at U.S. Cyber Command, and I'm your moderator, Scott Massioni, on the discussion, How U.S. Cyber Command is Keeping Networks Safe, sponsored by Microfocus Government Solutions on Federal News Network. 